What do you think? I think we're dead meat. Real dead meat. You're dead meat! Go ahead and laugh, you guys. The final final little pass is a business. A dead meat. Hey everybody, welcome back to What's Your Favorite Scary Movie, the show where I talk to people about their favorite scary movies. I have Chelsea joining me today Hi. for this first episode of season two, I'm calling it, because uh, her favorite horror movie is also the favorite horror movie of our guest today, Otis from the WWE. Hey, Otis. Oh yeah, what's going on, guys? <laughs> You're talking about all sorts of gore and ghouls and all that crazy stuff. I've been told by many people on the internet that you are, in fact, a big horror movie fan, and I see that puzzle you mentioned of Maniac over your shoulder. And that's like, that's a deep cut. That's not necessarily a wider known horror movie. So I know you're legit if you have that on your wall. Definitely a big fan guy when it comes to horror movies. Because I believe it's the only genre to make you really feel besides a thriller movie. And with Texas Chainsaw Master, you feel like you're watching a real film. You're watching it just like, good God. So yeah, your favorite horror movie is the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Yes, absolutely. I remember my mom, she was talking about this movie. Now, my mind is I'm maybe six or seven seven years old. I haven't seen a film quite like this. But when she was building this to me, remember she ran into the movie and she goes, my son, let me tell you about this movie. It's some crazy son of a bitch who wears skin on his face. He has two brothers. These kids have no idea what they're driving into and it becomes a disaster for him. But I won't ruin it for you because there's only one survivor. And I'm like, you just ruined it for me, <laughs> but hey, just literally, it's American cult classic movie. Honestly, like you can watch it again and again, it never gets old for me personally because you get involved and you get invested in the emotion. Yeah, and you know, you were saying that, oh, mom, you spoiled the end, but it's weird how now, especially, we're all pretty aware of how a horror movie's gonna go. There's always gonna be a girl left. Like Halloween, Lori's gonna live and Texas Chainsaw Sally's gonna live, but that doesn't ruin it. And like you said, you've watched it over and over and over again. There's something more to it than just, oh, that the plot happened and I guess, okay, I'm done thinking about it. Oh yeah. Yeah, I think especially with Texas Chainsaw Massacre because I mean, I also watched it pretty young uh, as you did. I was probably around 10 or so. And when you're watching movies at a younger age, you don't necessarily recognize when they're weird and different. Yes. So I watched Texas Chainsaw Massacre and I was like, okay, it's, uh, it's scary and you know, it was effective, but I didn't realize just how different of a movie it was until I was older when you watch it after having seen a lot of normal movies yeah it, like you said it seems like it's real like it's a voyeuristic look at these people's real lives and you have all these things that don't really go anywhere the weird people that they run into in the beginning that drunk guy just like leaning back and talking it's just an old man talking it couldn't be any more real because of the budget I forgot the budget I think Joe Bob knows that top of his head I'm sure he does yeah, it's just the budget was just as real as it gets. They had one trailer for the girls. They had a van, which you saw in there. I guess, I don't know where the men would dress, but you you could just tell they were in the heat. They were in the shit. And like you got uh, Gunner, he's got to wear that that material. And he's a big, I know big guys sweat in Texas. I know about Texas. <laughs> so yeah, it's, it's hot up there, man. And like me, being a big guy myself, being 360 pounds, pure love machine. It's kind of tough to really keep that that uh, that just plate your hair dry all that and him being in that rubber mask it had been brutal for him but it, I mean I think it only helped those guys to get in the shit of the character it's great how you know because the, the beginning they pick up the hitchhiker and he's talking about oh yeah you know we worked in the slaughterhouses and that's that's the good way of killing right then you just immediately feel disgusting and yeah like you mentioned everyone running around looking sweaty and miserable and they must have been just so hot but it works it makes Makes you feel that kind of slaughterhouse gross. Yeah, like the heat and grime come through the screen and you feel dirty watching it. Like we had a, a recent screening with some of our friends who had never seen it before and it was just silence the whole way. And then at the end, people were just like, what did you make us watch, yeah. man? <laughs> yeah, it's not it's not a movie where people come over. I got a great movie for you guys to watch because as big horror fans, we find comedy in a lot of these things because it's so entertaining. Like him doing the tongue through the window while Franklin's just selling the big arm cut and them fighting before they get in the house. Oh my God, it was like, that's something you don't appreciate until you're older and you, you realize, because you could tell like these remake of uh, Texas Chainsaw, I, I will but I will put over that it was very nicely done. I have nothing bad to say against it, but uh, you could tell that 
they're not really into the shit because you know they, they now times have changed. There's more of a budget, but you could tell these girls they just got a little bit of what do you call it grit, a little bit dirty. You know, they could tell their hair hasn't been combed and there's there's nothing pretty about it. When you see uh, Jessica in the remake, you're like, well, baby, I know you're sweaty and you're sexy and you're running through the woods and all that, but your hair is perfect. They say it was the most brutal, brutal movie ever, but you don't see too much brutalness. I mean, the hook, you imagine it in your head, but you don't see that scene where he, when she has a girl, I'm just like, this girl can not get away from him. Oh, no. Yeah, they, when she wakes up at the dinner table and just screams and they're all laughing at her. <laughs> It's so visceral, man. And yeah, the fact that you don't see very much is part of why I think this movie works so well and I think is so much more intelligent than people, maybe just mainstream. Like, if you're just familiar with the title, you know, this isn't high art or anything. Yeah, this you might think it's like a hostile or yeah. a Saw sequel where it's just nonstop gore, but I, I think that both speaks to the intelligence of the filmmaking and the effectiveness is that even some people who have seen the movie will say, oh, it's really graphic and gory just because they were so affected by what they were watching that they started to imagine things that they didn't even see. And there are some really nice shots in it. I think my favorite is Drayton comes across the hitchhiker and he's mad at him and he starts hitting him in front of the car and they're like backlit by the headlights. And I just think that's a really weirdly beautiful shot. I told you to stay away from that graveyard. <laughs> When you first see him on the movie, you're like, okay, it's probably some weird old man who lives in Texas and has a gas station with one Coke machine. But like, when you see him get solely into the character and then he's like, you can see he's enjoying what he's doing to her, as to the entertainment, but also there are some sick bastards out there, which is why these movies work so well, is that she's just poking her with the stick yeah. while she's helplessly tied up in a sack. I hope you're not too uncomfortable down there. Yeah, that, that's one of my favorite scenes too, because the way he gets mad while he drives up, he goes, oh, you little shit. He's banging on the, his truck door and, and like uh, favorite line. Look what your brother yes. did to the door. Oh, Dude, that's brother my favorite line too. We, we always <laughs> yell that at each other. It's like, I don't know why it's so funny, but it's my favorite line. The delivery is just so, it's so good. Look what your brother did to the door. These are some ravenous, savages killers who are just eating people. But then you're like, oh, they're a family. So they talk just like, oh, we, we would talk to a, a sibling and, and like him just like yelling at Letterface and he's back in a way I didn't understand at first the uh, the slowness of Letterface as a kid when you learn back into it like he probably has no idea besides getting told what to do kind of like Halloween like that mystique of you don't know why he's doing it and I always thought this is very sick humor but not Kirk but the other guy was looking for Kirk he was like uh, by the door and he goes anybody in there and then Letterface just had the guy's head and goes you haven't seen him turns him around but hey that's just sick humor <laughs> Yeah, that wouldn't be out of place in that second movie because that's so much more of a comedy. And I mean, I love the second movie. I, I do too. I love yeah. Chop Top. He's one of my favorite characters. But it that first movie still is really funny. Like you were saying with Drayton and just the sibling rivalry back and forth. It's such dark humor. And I think that's something that maybe people who don't watch horror movies at all, when you tell them, oh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre. It's Masters, hilarious. It's so funny. Yeah. They're like, <laughs> what's, what's the matter with you? <laughs> And people always say it, this is always ahead of its time, but that was truly ahead of its time because, I mean, what was the movie made again? I forgot what the year it was made. Uh, 74. 74, yeah. yeah. Real early. 70, 74. I mean, this is, I can't imagine a lot of movies. What was Halloween made? That was 78. Eight? So yeah, that was four years later. So, yeah. I mean, do it. I mean, do these slashers, this is probably one of the, the major kind of birth of the slashers. I mean, I'm, I'm not, I don't know that for sure. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not No, I'm not you're, that's about. dead on. Yeah, because yeah. uh, the only other one that was that early was Black Christmas that came out later that year. Oh, but... Black Christmas. Yeah, yeah I love yeah. Black Christmas. So good. But yeah, Texas Chainsaw it's, is really the first in a number like of ways. The kind of slasher, like formula slasher. And it's, it's, it's crazy to talk about Ed Gein and just like that case changed not only like American culture, but like horror too it's nuts how that was such a watermark like there's before and after the Ed Gein case I think it was kind of like people associate yeah. danger with maybe the cities the country is very wholesome and, and rural and nothing bad happens there but then you get Ed Gein and all of a sudden the country is a scary place to be like rural America is scary all of a sudden and I think that out of character wise, Leatherface became bigger than life because if he just had an old man in that movie, which they had, a, they have a, a couple of Ed movies, then Kane Hodder, you see some weird piece of skin on someone's face that they redid in uh, Devil's Rejects, House of Thousand Corpses, basically made the Alt Robinson movies, but yeah. <laughs> other movies that have a skin on them, you're thinking, you're thinking Leatherface. <laughs> 
Oh, look at me! Look at me! I'm Leatherface! And that's just, like I said, it's just something before it's time at And like, I think Leatherface, he's carrying his load, man. He's he's the man. You know, he put it, he, he just saw his leg. He still kept coming after it. I mean, the guy's a tough son of a bitch. He's yeah. crazy. You know, like that's something where you just, you can appreciate is like, all right, like, even though he's evil, even though like, everyone still reads Leatherface every time. You still feel bad for him a little bit, too. He's getting pushed around by his family and he's kind of, everyone's yelling at him and calling him stupid. And... He just seems stressed out by all these kids coming into I think his house. He's Sweet. I I love him. <laughs> What's your guys' favorite part of the movie besides what you've already did before? That door sliding open gives me chills every time. The framing is perfect. There's not really any music or sound. It's just the sound of that door clinging open, yeah. and it's so stark and so fucking scary. That that gong noise. Yep. <laughs> And then, I mean, the whole ending sequence is just beautiful. The way it's shot, where he's swinging the chainsaw around and the colors are gorgeous. It's like just sunrise. It's all orange and pink. And it's just like, it's so cool. You think she made it? Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, her laughing. Like just that. Psychotic. I don't laughing. know how much of that's even acting. <laughs> I think that was one of the last things they shot. And so she is laughing. I think they actually had to go back and reshoot that final shot. And uh, so I think her laughing yeah. is legit excitement of having finally be being done with this experience of shooting that because <laughs> shooting that dinner scene, which is my favorite scene, which you think lasts longer than it does. I think it's only about 10 minutes or even less from when she wakes up, but just all the super close-ups close on her, of her eyes, eyes, like that's yeah. crazy to me. And just her pleading and offering anything to get out of there and them just laughing at her. <laughs> We've talked a lot about the humor in the movie. I think some of my favorite humor involves Grandpa and how he's the best <laughs> at killing, but he can't even hold a hammer up. And they're just like, they keep trying to put it in his hand so that he can do it, but he keeps dropping it. That's so dark, but it's so I love, funny to me. I love that it was a young guy in old makeup, John Dugan, who we met at, what was it, Midsummer Scream? Yeah. And James took a picture of him pretending to hit me over the head with a hammer, and he was so sweet. He was like, are you sure you want to take this picture of me just bashing your girlfriend over the head with, like, yes, please. And Drayton even in the background and go, yeah, Grandpa, yeah, get her, Grandpa. Get her, Grandpa. Yeah, get get that bitch. <laughs> get that bitch, Leatherface, get that bitch. You gotta have Grandpa in there. He's sucking on her fingers. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, he, and, the, and the way he's just kind of moving his hands to paid. One that I feel personally, and the one that I think would be the scariest, cause I've pushed my mom in a wheel in a wheelchair in the woods. I mean, it's no. been like, you know, we're, I know how hard that is. So you're walking, obviously they could use Franklin as an overweight guy. She's trying to push him. He just, come on, Sally, push. Well, come on, push. No, push. No, push, damn. Just again, reminds me of my mother because she'd just be like, come on, Nico. Yeah, get on there. Yeah, get a bunch <laughs> up for those rocks. Then all of a sudden, here's Letterface. The lights on him, the chainsaw is oh, up. Every time. He's going right through the torso, baby. But that's just legit terrifying if you saw that in real life. A guy with a chainsaw, not a familiar face, just sawing the hell out of your brother. And she would stand there and have her arms up like this and freaking the hell out, which is great because she's doing that. And finally, when her face turns and looks at her, then that whole chase scene. And that was, it just seems like the movie picks up so loud in that damn part. It's just like, there's screaming, there's music, there's a chainsaw. He's going around crazy. And then it gets quiet when she gets through the gas station, the barbecue. It's like, wait, that's, that's it? Just, just quiet now. There's a country song playing in the background. There's barbecue and a rotisserie. We can breathe now. Thank goodness. Because good lord, I don't take her running and screaming that much longer. <laughs> There's always like when you watch a horror movie, you're like, all right, who do you want to die first? That's very bad to say. But I think Kirk had it coming. I think Kirk was like, he was giving his buddy some shit for not stopping away for gas, not doing this. And I'm like, all right, brother, you're just sitting there complaining. You're not doing anything to help us. I think he just had it coming. Yeah. And it just, yeah, and it sucks that the, the pretty lady had to get, you know, had, had to go after him. She just goes, let me see what's going on in this random house and check it out. I think she's going to, you know, see all the, the crazy stuff there. How many deaths were there in Texas Chainsaw Master? Not including the already dead. 
actual kills. Well, brother, that's my job is counting kills <laughs> in horror movies. So. <laughs> I mean, let me do a quick recap. Five people died in the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, which might be lower than you expected, but I tried to warn you about that up top. Kirk, Pam, Jerry, Franklin. I think it's, oh, and uh, Hitchhiker, so five. There yeah. <laughs> oh, that's right. Yeah, Hitchhiker dies. Oh, he, he because gets he's run in, the hell over. He's in part two, or his body's in part two, right? Yeah, that's his yeah. body that they're dancing with in the beginning that's of part right. two. Oh. What the hell is that? And by the way, with the door, with the ch with the chainsaw in the truck, he's just scraping, like, he's just, p that would piss me off. I was at that truck. Get your get job, bro. He's just sitting there making circles. I'm not even trying to get in the door, but hey, this makes the movie get that much magical. What color is Leatherface's chainsaw? Is it yellow? It's yellow, yeah. yeah. You got it. <laughs> <laughs> what is the name of the first mask you see on Motherface? Oh, I don't know. I don't know. It has a, I didn't realize it had a name. The one you first see is the house slippers. Is the what? They call it the house slippers, his first mask. The one his he always slippers. wears. Oh, like his comfortable thing oh. to just put on. Yeah. Oh, yeah. wow. Yeah, it's it, there's name for different faces. Now one's house slippers is the one oh, that's where great. he slippers. wears. Oh, he's so cute. <laughs> it's his house that he wears while he looks out the window and just licks those pointy, gross teeth. <laughs> <laughs> this continues my tradition of not getting a perfect score with trivia questions. I always get at least one wrong. And this time it was the damn uh, house slippers mask name that stumped me. So good work, Otis. I love that. <laughs> He's got his slippers on. Well, Otis, thank you so much for, for joining us. Absolutely. This is a fun way to, you know, be able to talk to people and make content with other horror fans, even though, you know, we've been kind of stuck in this apartment for <laughs> however long now. Yeah. yeah, guys, thanks for having me, man. Honestly, anytime you got want me on the on the show, man, just let me know, man. We'll, we'll talk about any, any other movies or certain subjects of slasher or something like that. We'll tell, we should have you on the podcast or something. For yeah, sure. So anytime, guys. Uh, like you said, I'm like, an honor to be on the show. You know, just keep on watching those movies and always have extra butter on your freaking popcorn. Yeah. <laughs> and salt. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you, Otis. <laughs> Thanks so much. And for everyone watching, we'll have more of these coming up. So stay tuned and be good people.